around. LGD, they brought you to Shanghai. They brought you to their home turf. And now OG have to play against the roars of the LGD fans. Yes, I am so excited for this matchup. As Alan pointed out, the stats all lead us to believe that this will be one aggressive match. And the heroes that they have too, and there's raw aggression on both sides. They want a team fight nonstop. There's always a great five-man potential. Both teams have good amount of catch. Oh, Blitz, that, that assist leader that now uh, Alan brought up, that got me hyped, man. That got me hyped. I was just thinking, these two teams love to be able to fight around each other, and clashing against each other just means we're going to be seeing nonstop action. So an interesting point uh, that Insania brought up was that OG forces you to play at their tempo. They force you to play a very fast game. They want you to get into these silly situations where you feel like you have to dive, and they feel like they have to dive as a result. And so do you feel like LGD adjusted their draft to address that? I mean, they've got some pretty fast heroes. The Gyrocopter, uh, what a very popular hero of this tournament, has had a lot of success. The Ember Spirit low cooldown hero as well. The only long cooldown they have is that Tidehunter, which has been a favorite among some of the Chinese teams at this tournament. Yeah, it's been a favorite of a lot of teams just because Tidehunter, no matter what, will get his Ravage off. But OG have one of the best ways to deal with it in the Anaphasis Void. The Chronos here, of course, doesn't really care about the Kraken Shell too much. And they've got some great heroes to follow up on it as well. They've got the Elder Titan with his Earth Splitter and Stomp. They've got Pango even being able to swashbuckle from a distance. And let's not forget about the OG Thompson Zeus, which is going to be in the mid matchup against Maybe's Gyrocopter. And they're going to run a side lane Ember Spirit to dodge that matchup. I think what PSG LGD learned from last year is you always have to have the ability to fight OG. OG is one of the best teams at coming back from a poor laning phase. I mean, they have Topson who it feels like he almost always gets solo killed at some point in the lane, but it doesn't feel like it really matters because he figures out a way to win. We're going to have that four position Pango for Jerex that's going to be assisting Seb Spurion at the top lane, just trying to harass the Ember Spirit out of lane as much as possible. It is going to be backed by a pretty offensive duo, the Ember Spirits and Oracle. Round level three, they can do a lot against this. See Ame just trying to get as much CS as he can, trying to deal with the Treants and clear them out. Well, bottom lane, Anna with his Faceless Void, babysat by No Tails Elder Titan, may not be able to provide the same kind of uh, lane assistance that FY's Lion is going to have. But that range advantage is constantly harassing both Anna and No Tail. That's why No Tail's going to come in from behind with all that spirit damage, immediately gets stunned up. Let's Chalice just kind of juke No Tail out until the damage wears away. This bottom lane Chalice oh, is getting a little bit low. No Tail. He's actually turned on to FY instead. FY forced to use the stun. No bash this time for man. Only level one bash. They already procced once. Has to be careful about pushing forward like that. As there is a level of gush early by Chalice, and the time walk level one cooldown is so long. Yeah, he's gonna have to be a little bit careful of any harassment that comes his way while that's on cooldown, but that's what No Tail's here for. And geez, it seems like nobody can fight him. It just keeps on spamming out spirit after spirit. So it looks to me, Blitz, like maybe the uh, the side lanes are going to go a little bit better for OG. How's that mid lane matchup supposed to go? It looks like maybe is taking a huge lead already. 12 and 3 compared to 7 and 2 against Tops. Uh, I think this lane goes fine for the Gyrocopter. Like, Zeus typically just sort of trades out farm. Uh, that's what this hero does. He's not meant to really win any lanes or get any solo kills. Because the point of the hero is that your team fight is so strong that it shouldn't matter at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Seth, though, with the hero that we haven't seen a whole lot played in this position too much, uh, Nature's Prophet in the off lane. This hero comes with its own set of problems. I think the reason why they pick it is for that global presence with the Zeus. Oh, first one, that's gonna be a fly. The Lion managed to get the kill on No Tail. This time he just gets a bit too far forward, challenges LGD a bit much. In the effort to try and create Anna some space. The chance LGD have begun. And that's what I thought was the coolest thing is the Chinese crowd, they have not been any slouches when it comes to cheering for OG. They like OG a lot. But when OG's introduction came out on stage, they were extremely quiet. They wanted OG to know, in this matchup, we're not favoring you at all. We are backing our boys LGD.
Yeah, no booze, but you know, they're gonna show their hometown team love. Zap going in for the dive, X Nova. And he's around right now. The Triant is going to reveal him the whole entire way, and Zeb's going to try and get in position with the trees. He'll just finish him off with a little Triant, and that's going to be good enough. Meanwhile, Ave actually coming in through the side here does pick up Jerex, and he's going to try and uh, challenge some of that CS that's floating into the tower. Our mid matchup continues to be rather dominant for maybe Gyrocopter. Just keeps on throwing out missile after missile, and maybe is a very good one on one mid laner. His creep aggro tricks. Uh, the way that he almost always times out denies. The fact that he's got four denies against the Zeus. Yeah, it's a little hard to do, especially since uh, with Thompson spamming out the lightning bolt after lightning bolt, bringing himself a few mangoes as well. He's trying to keep the Rasp in battle going back and forth. Not just be entirely run by the missile. Jerex takes a little bit of damage, but he has the range drop now. And that'll make the offensive pressure of this Oracle a lot less viable. Smart little choice by him after he got killed by Ame, traded out. LGD do manage to get the bounty rune at bottom lane. No tail, he's got a lot of damage in return though. But it's currently Seb right now, leading the net worth chart on the side of both teams. Chalice not doing bad for himself either. Yeah. And both offlaners having a good start. I feel like it's very important for Nature's Prophet, especially in this meta, to have a good start. Uh, just because you do have comeback mechanics, but you need to be ahead with this hero to fight because he doesn't come with any sort of stun. His ulti is pretty good, but unreliable at team fights. So the important part about all of this is being able to be ahead and stay ahead in that ward. They're trying to sneak in a kill. They do have that very defensive mid lane ward that spotted out the rotation from FY's line. So they know he's somewhere behind Thompson. So Thompson's going to play really safe, especially whenever the missile is cast on him. One thing that LGD will need to rely upon heavily here is their teamwork and communication, right? Because while there are a lot of downsides to the Furion, the big advantage is this is a core Furion with so much global presence, you can't be overly focusing on your lane and just trading out against that enemy hero. You never know when the Furion's gonna show up and change the odds. And Ame, top lane, is gonna start going on Seb. He doesn't have any chains yet. Wanted to see if he could find the angle, so Seb will be just fine. Has two different ways to get out of this situation. I think part of the reason why they take the MP2, though, is they have an easy way to push out the lanes and start fights. Yeah. And on top of that, it just no, lanes well. We're certainly seeing that with uh, Ame falling below. Ana's face is void. Here comes CS mid lane. They're going to drop them off. Maybe with the help of FY, we'll get the kill on mid lane OG Tots. And they'll find that Observer Ward that spotted out FY earlier. So really good read by him. He understood that his rotations were spotted. Finds a different angle to get it. Jerex now top lane. Jerex is going to be gone on his range drop. It's gone, so he's going to be slowly burned down by Ame. Slide fish and finish him off. Next Nova, can he stay ahead of the Furion? He will. And now Zeb does not have a teleport, so he knows he kind of has to battle Ame back here. But, oh, the ultimate comes out. That'll be enough to finish off X Nova. And the Flame Guard will wear out for Ame as well. Seb will be fine. Still, though, 4 to 2 to the favor of LGD. Part of uh, something that we should talk about is the vision game between these two teams. Zeus and Nature Prophet, of course, makes it so easy to win that vision battle. That's why. Jeez, Anchor Smasher, no. And as long as he can get those bashes, it's still going to be an incredible amount of damage. Thinking about chasing down Jerex, just places down the rim. Something we should note too is the presence of the two wards uh, that LGD have decided to go for. This is, I think, a direct counter to Thompson and the type of rotations that he wants to make into the enemy jungle. We saw that so often in the series against L uh, EG, in fact, when he played the Tiny and he just found the TB over and over again. Yeah. This ward vision isn't really meant to protect mid so much as it is meant to protect the jungle uh, and Ame's lane, in fact. Yeah. Because I feel like Thompson, more than any other core, invades that jungle area. So they want to make sure that they spot him coming the entire way through. And I've noticed before, like, Thompson Zeus, he's very reliant on being able to pick up power runes and bounty runes as well. So yes. those sort of rotations are going to be spotted out by these Observer Words, at least the top half. And just by process of elimination, no X, no, but he's still blocked in, trying to eat two different trees, that's still not good enough. Duck maybe is here, they're going to try and get the kill onto Jerex, they trade out X, Nova, run over by the Remnant. 
With the rotation coming out, OG isn't going to be too sad about it. They trade support for support, and it required maybe to make rotation like that. Yeah, but maybe he's trying to protect this top lane area. He's focusing on that so much because he doesn't want his jungle to get invaded. Seth gonna get stunned up. Bolt immediately, and Seth has to be careful here, but maybe they don't have the damage. Down here, it's gonna be a little hard. The Hex goes out, they're just running out of damage now. If anything, Thompson might be able to get the kill, especially with Jarrett. With a long range watch, but barely getting away with the TP as well. Great read by Thompson. I would anticipate PSGLGD to continue to send Gyro up to this top lane, protect this area. Don't let this tower fall, especially against the Nature's Prophet. He plays like Beastmaster in the sense, mid lane Somnus getting a little bit low, but should be perfectly fine. He's got a lot of support behind him. The next step is going to be those 10 minute bounty rooms. Chalice has already pushed out bottom, and we've got rotation from our supports to secure this lane. If they can get the pick off on the uh, No Tail, the captain of OG, then they might be able to actually finish off this tier 1 tower. Otherwise, it's going to be a slow push. Next Nova. They They know they spoke. They've got to get out of here. Oh, he actually used the magic meter on himself, but there goes FY. X Nova thought he was going to be the target. Now Jarex looks to be able to pick up the bounty route in front of him and body block X Nova as well with the orb of venom. Makes it very easy for Thompson to help get that kill. And now OG taking the kill score lead. Very surprised that they decided to make that play. Uh, he didn't see Thompson until the smoke broke, so that should have alerted him to the fact that there were more than one hero here. At least he should know that one support is behind him, but they still decided to take the fight. Maybe they thought with the addition of Ravage it would be enough. But Chalice was in no position to back them up. It looks like we're gonna see a continuation of uh, Thompson's earlier build, which is just running for the really fast boots of travel with the Fury on there. They're gonna try and abuse LGD and especially this lower pace of the Titan, right? Yeah, I will say though, uh, OG, their ways to start fight start and end with Chronos here for the most yeah. part. Uh, maybe Jarex can get some stuff done too, but a lot is on Ana in this game. Chronos here, of course, so good at taking every single fight. Void, I feel like, has been one of the heroes of the tournament, especially coming from a position where he was so weak, and nowadays everyone seems to love him. I think he just works so well as a counter core. Every single core in the game feels so bad about playing against him. And look at this, this is the ward that I was talking about, that yep. you were trying to protect. Protect the jungle against OG. Don't let them get in here for free. That's why X Nova is kind of positioned to be able to break smoke. Oh, he was there to break the smoke but and now he still get cut out. More, and now Jarex is going to try and take some of this. Yes, they're going to turn and try and kill Jarex, but there goes the Chronosphere. Oh, perfectly timed with the Earth Splitter. This is just a beauty of a team fight for OG. And to get the self on Ame as well, rolling Thunder, nails him and tops the finish off Lightning as well. OG just perfectly execute that fight. LGD fall apart. Oh, the timing of that was so rough for them. Yeah. X Nova was there just to break that smoke. They have two wards to protect that area. Doesn't seem to matter as OG read that perfectly. And that's all set up by Jarex as well, who getting into that position off the of swashbuckle, yeah. being able to get that kind of ward down, spotting the stacks. I mean, this ward right here, you they're going to place a similar ward either in this area or this area higher up. Yeah. They always want to invade your jungle. And by taking the mid tower and pressuring this top Whoa! That lightning bolt just stalled FY long enough for Seth to complete his TP. Once they lose his top tower, PSG LGD is going to feel very hemmed in. You see that FY searching for it right now. They know there's vision up here. They eventually find it. But the damage has already been done. A team wipe like that, or at least close to it, leads into the mid tower being taken. And that just means rotations into your jungle are going to come harder and faster, especially at that safe lane tower. Well, you know it's eventually going to die. You yes. try and protect it, but it's like playing against a centaur. It's I think you actually have to protect it in this game. Yeah. It doesn't feel good to do, but I think if PSG LGD lose their safe lane tower too early, uh, they're going to lose so much map control and map pressure in this game that Seb is going to have too good of a game, which is why I wanted them to protect their jungle. And they were for the most part, but you slip for a second. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you lose control of your jungle, you lose through heroes, and you lose your mid tower. Okay, what about if you're losing your mid tower? What about you trying to take the enemy safe lane tower and open up their jump? Is that going to be equally effective? I'm okay with that play. It just feels rough because one side has a Tidehunter 
and one side has the Nature's Prophet. Yeah. If you're going to make this play down towards bottom, I think then you have to go towards mid with your Ravage. That's yep. the only way that you can keep up with the tempo of OG. Look at Ame, he just can't stop it. The Treants, as well as Anna, will be able to finish up that safe lane tower. They just couldn't do enough to be able to stall that. So they'll trade out. Well, what did you Tier 1 towers. As a result, OG holding a 2k gold lead to Thompson. Just doing a little bit of scouting there. I think he was maybe a bit afraid of some sort of smoke rotation or something. But X Nova, he's been spotted here big time. Does manage to at least kill a ward. But he is certainly dead. They'll give that last hit to Seb as well. That. There's already an Orchid on Seb. 14 minutes in. Yeah. This guy's got an Orchid. That's pretty insane. I, I would have expected the... Uh, the this old gonna... uh, Solar Crest build from him. I, I think it's because his lane was going so well. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to hard counter up the Ember Spirit as a result. Yeah, no, I mean, it's going to be super unhappy with this timing, that's for sure. FY in trouble. Gets hit by the Rolling Thunder. Bounce back by Jarek. Swashbuckle to finish him off. Nice and easy. But at the same time, No-Tail is going to be chased down. They are going to be able here. to get the Orchid out onto the Dryercops. The drums goes out. They want to make sure that everyone's safe here. Exnova is always there with the Dispel as well. And look at that, as soon as Ame sees the Orchid, he immediately pivots to the BKB. Yeah. I feel like he needs some sort of DPS item first. Maybe even a Maelstrom into the BKB. I feel like this BKB is a little bit of a bait. It's, it's, it's so hard too, right? It's like he could try and depend on Exnova, but Exnova doesn't really want to play around him all the no, time, right? He, he wants, he wants to, play to play around, around the Gyro. Yeah. Completely right. But at the same time, if you don't go this, uh, if you do go the BKB, hold up, bottom lane, Jarek's gonna be chain stunned here. He will have an opportunity to, oh, no, no, he won't. He'll just die a little bit too fast, thanks to the finger of death. I really feel like uh, PSG LGD, they wanna utilize this Ravage. If you wanna do something with it in this game, sometimes the threat is better, but in this game right now, OG's not really respecting the threat of the Ravage. Do you agree with that? 85 to 15, is this game that one-sided to OG's favor? Uh, no. And it starts here, Thompson. They're gonna they be able to get Thompson here with the pipe as well. They're made super tanky. And a kill streak on him as well. That's gonna mean a lot for PSG LGD and the two heroes that collect that experience and that bounty. But bottom lane, OG, he's beginning to round some of these heroes. Anna, looking to chase him down. FY turns around for the hacks, but that's just enough. Oh, stop doesn't it? Even though the Hex is there, there's no damage, there's no stunts. Now Ame, who's just mid lane, is now bottom. Looking for an opening. He's invis right now. They're all teaming find away here. inside the trees. Can they find anybody who's going to go for the blind slight fist? They're pinging right now on the ground. Anna. I think they know he knows no tails here. Anna. I think he realized he just had to leave behind. But the Ravage instantly going out. They have managed to finish off no tail. Yes, but there's no way they can go for Anna now. You're right. They wanted to be able to use that Ravage. But they only use it to be able to kill a five position. And now they're going to trade out X Nova. As he gets found expertly by Jerems. And this is pretty disastrous, I think, for PSG LGD because they rely so heavily on the Ravage to start fights for them, too. And Double they beat. haven't had to use the Chronosphere. Uh, this feels a little bit rough for them. Yeah. But they are farming a lot of stacks, uh -huh. and their timing is going to come once they get their BKBs. I feel like once you get your BKBs on PSG LGD, the game changes once again. Jerex, he's been really using the mobility of this Washbuckle to, to get wards down that you just wouldn't normally expect, fortunately, because of that. I think moment. these teams do expect each other's wards, though. Yeah, they played against each other uh, in these high-pressure situations now. This is the third time. If anybody's going to be able to see these kind of moves coming up from OG, it's got to be LGD. Yeah, and it feels like I, OG, it feels like they're doing the same things that they did that made them successful in the first place. Massive kill. Jarek is going to fall with that big rotation from LGD, though. Look at this rotation from OG. No tail. That's real low, but I actually thought for a second he was getting caught out by the Kronos here. But he does jump away safely, kind of reading the situation in time. And that's going to be the next timing window for PSG LGD. It's once the BKBs come online, what do the fights look like? Of course, that doesn't solve all their problems because the Chronosphere doesn't really care. In the early game, though, BKB is so good against uh, the Faceless Void just because yeah. the time lock damage is magical. So if you get your BKB off, Absolutely you're perfect. usually going to be okay. Okay, so let's talk about like uh, later into the game. We have this Faceless Void and the win probability heavily favoring OG. Is this just because 
the Chronosphere is the be all end all of uh, of team fights, but you simultaneously said it's like it's their only form of initiation. Yeah, that's why uh, I don't think the game is that over as Dota Plus things. I think it's closer to probably like 60 40, yes. if I had to guess, because I, I feel like PSG LGD's lineup, they have multiple ways to begin a fight, and at the top level, I feel like that determines a lot. Whoever can start a fight first, it makes their lineup so much easier to play. Yeah. It's not impossible to play OG's lineup, but the execution has to be so high. Yeah. It means that Ana has to hit like these two three-man chronos that consistently catch at least one core hero, that consistently catch at least the Oracle so he doesn't just get that hard save. Whereas for PSG LGD, you have Ravage, you're going to get Blink on your Lion at some point, your Gyro with his BKB can just run in for you, uh, yeah. your Ember Spirit can consistently just sit in the back lines, poke you with uh, chains, like, that is easy ways to begin a fight. Whereas, like, Topson won't do that for you. Seb's hero, he's very farmed, but Nature's Prophet by nature can't really begin a fight. He doesn't come with a stun. Sprout is nice, but it works. It's like, it's one of those abilities that Yo, it sucks early no game. Chill, it's pretty good in the mid game. Yeah. Late game, it's kind of bad. And then ultra late game, it's great again because you start running out of things like Clone Blades and Force Stacks. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> What do you think is going through LGD's head in a situation like this, where they've opted to go the double BKBs? You've obviously shown some uh, some questions about it. You're, you're not sure if this is like, uh, maybe they're sacrificing too much of their game. Do you think it's they're scared of this early game of OG and want to make sure they're not run over? Or do you think it's more about um, they feel confident in their late game and they just have to weather through the storm in the next coming moment? I think it's both. Uh, I feel like what they're trying to do is match OG's timing. OG is a very timing-based team. Once they get their two or three items, they just want to run at you and fight, fight, fight. I think PSG LGD, what they're trying to do is weather that storm. And yep. by going for the BKBs, you give yourself the best chance at actually being able to team fight. Uh, five on five, because I feel like that's what a lot of teams lack, is the ability to engage OG on their terms. That's what we saw uh, EG falter in game two and game three, when they took that uh, Terrorblade and the anti mage. They just never had any opportunities to straight up five on five. Was that intentional? Having a little bit of fun with this pause right now, as uh, so are the players. And I love to see the fact that LGD, we obviously saw in uh, some of the documentaries and such that it did get into LGD's head, all the chat will that was happening, right? It is, there is a psychological element to Dota 2. You don't think they've muted each other by now? And I mean, I, le I like the fact that LGD is playing along. Whether or not they've muted OG and are just, you know, spamming out chat wheel, you know, hoping that they see it. But I like the fact that they're doing it just as much as OG is. You got to, uh, you know, you got to face your fears, right? You can't run from them. You know that OG is doing it. You can't let it uh, bother you. And what better way to do it with tons of fans and friends supporting you here in Shanghai? I can't believe both teams, by the way, have made it back. I know it's it's just so insane because we always talk about uh, the marker, right, of the first player to be able to win an international twice, oh, and then no the fact that it hasn't happened. Hey, do you know? Hey, yet. You know? Eight years of internationals, you know? now on our you know? The fact that it hasn't happened yet goes to show how hard it is to maintain that dominance that in the Dota 2 field. That the competition everybody. level is so high that you just cannot be the best for very long. I think it's because of the meta switches. Yeah. It's that and uh, it's the motivation. Once you've won TI, you've won it all. And once you've gone second, I feel like uh, we had that second place curse for a while, right? Where we saw DC. Uh, C deck, this team that just kind of falls off a cliff. Yep. It's so hard to motivate yourself to think you were that close to winning it all. You have, on one side, you have a team that thinks to themselves, we worked so hard and we came up short. And you have another team that says, well, we've accomplished everything that we need to in Dota. And the fact that they've been able to push themselves back to this level, yeah. both sides, it means they're hungry as ever. I mean, that's, that's simply incredible. The story with LGD, I think, is, is really interesting where you have players like maybe who have been long heralded as this god tier player who was kind of chosen by a lot of the chinese fans and such to be that player that would represent them and bring home the ages yeah he is their champion yeah and Absolutely i can see the motivation i can see all the stories for them but how does og have the will to just make it through again back to back like this yeah it's incredible 
uh, incredible from both sides. Yeah. I, I respect the hell out of this competition. I'm sure they have a lot of mutual respect for each other. It must be so surreal looking over the stage and you see these guys and you think to yourself, here we go again. <laughs> By the way, I just want to point out the fact that uh, we know that every single day, OG has developed their own uh, taunt meta, we'll say, right? Where Raider came with the sprays, now comes with the flags they've been laying down the last few days. They've been changing up their icons every day uh, for OG and has been uh, just different pictures of each other from the uh, the TI uh, Oh, they chose each other. shoot. Yeah. So, for example, Jarex has that uh, Thompson photo where he's pointing towards the camera, sort of like an invoker. That's actually one of my favorites. I have to imagine, like, these guys, they've been on this stage before, but having a pause like this, I wonder how much of a reset it bothers OG, who's a very momentum-based team, right? Whereas LGD obviously have yet to be able to hit their timings and their BKB are able to plan out a little bit about what OG's next move is going to be. And it is kind of OG's, <laughs> it's in their court, right? Because they have this nature's prop and they have this uh, tops and boots of travel. They want to be able to outmaneuver LGD as much as possible. So the one thing about these heroes, when you have uh, Zeus and nature's prophet is they want to abuse the fact that they can play globally. What you want to do is push in the lanes, uh, force one hero from PSG LGD to come back, deal with the lanes, and as soon as that happens, you find yourself in a 4v5 situation. I think yeah. in a pure 5-on-5, five five, it's actually really hard for uh, OG to win team fights, unless you get like some sick chrono off. But as a whole, I think if you run it back a few times, PSG LGD comes out on top, which is why I think they took the Ember, because you have a hero that... Uh, because I was thinking about it, why did they take Ember over here, like Storm, for example? Yeah. And I think the reason why they took it is, this is another hero, he didn't go Boots of Travel, but he does have the ability to simply r keep a Remnant near yeah. his teammates, TP back, deal with the lane, Be and come back places, in. Though. And that's why he has to go for the BKB, because at some point, uh, OG's going to read that trap, yeah. uh, and they're going to say, we can just bring in our Orc in Nature's Prophet, plus one hero, he's going to die every single time. Yeah. So you have to get that BKB. It's not just for the team fight, it's so that you can safely push out the side lanes. It's such a cool meta that, that's developed in this regard. Like that's why uh, the draft matters so much. Like you need some way to deal with OG's ability to just deal with the waves at all times. You don't want the waves in your face. That's how OG sets up fights. So just like we were talking about how LGD is going to identify OG's win condition in Anna's Faceless Void, how they're actually going to be able to start fights. The same is going to be happening with LGD identifying how OG wants to move around the map and how they're going to try and counter that. Yeah, I, I've watched their games. Like, they're... I don't watch a lot of replays. Uh, I like to watch the games live, but these games, I study, like, 40 times the finals and their upper bracket finals. Yeah. Because I found it so interesting, like, the mini meta that has developed between these two teams. Like, why they pick the heroes that they pick. Because they've definitely developed, like, an internal meta anyways. They've extended their best of, like, 14 across <laughs> two different tournaments now. Battle Rune's going to be split, but Ame will have the advantage of finding a double damage room. See whether or not LGD wants to try and take a fight against OG now that they have their double BKBs. One for Gyro, one for the Ember Spirit. Tops, meanwhile, he's got Yule Scepter plus Boots of Travel, Anna has his hand of Midas, and he's going to be working on a fast defusal plate, so he's not as reliant on bashes or chronosphere to be able to lock people down and get his damage in. After Seb finished up that Orchid, he's got a, a BKB on its way. So very fast timing. And you notice that OG for once, they're not just looking for the straight up five man. They'll just continue to poke and prod, see where the weakness is for PSG, LGD, and as soon as they aren't together as five, and you notice uh, right here, Ame, he's playing away from his team. This is the correct move. Yep. Always play away from your team because you have the ability to gap close and come in to help them out. He's going to get gone on at bottom for the time being. Silent stuff, but... He's ready to try and finish off Seb. You use the BKB as soon as he thinks he's got Seb dead. And Seb's going to try and go for the TP, but I'm talking about... And that was a thousand gold for Ame. Holy crap. That's, uh, and now he's level 17. Oh! He's level 17? Oh, oh, okay, well, that's 
That's uh, halfway to a relic already for Ame. That's the same level as Azuz who's got the XP talent cap, just for context. <laughs> okay, then. That's more than double X Novas. Well, you could see exactly why OG want to stay away from the five-man fight right now because BSG LGD, they're very strong between their double meat yes. ABs and their blink dagger picked up by the Tidehunter. The worst thing that they can happen for uh, for OG is trying to challenge PSG LGD yeah. and get caught into a Ravage situation. And this is why I didn't think the game was 85-15 because uh, PSG LGD can just do this. They can send one hero at all times, Ame. Uh, you'll always see him be the one to push out the lanes. And as soon as he does, the rest of his team can four man, do whatever they feel like because they feel strong. Because uh, they know that OG doesn't want to just get into a straight five on five. And that's OG's strength, but they've gone for something a little bit different here. Maybe he's farming really fast, too. Like, even though he went for the straight BKB and not one of those farming items, he will have an Aghanim Scepter very soon. Yeah, That's going to make this Gyrocopter extremely tame. I think these BKBs were more picked up, so in case there is a team fight, but so you can secure these towers. Yeah. When you go for these tower pushes, OG, they're going to uh, they'll see the smoke with the Zeus ulti. How do you, they need how to do get active in the lanes fast. Once you have that kind of play where you smoke up, you have an idea of what you want to go for. And something like this happens where your smoke has been spotted out. Do you adapt? Do you keep on going for what your original I think you get vision was? out. Okay. You just you use this moment out, yeah. to be able to get vision instead of fighting. Uh, it's a little bit too obvious to get into a 5-on-5 five -five situation. Yeah. I feel like it's just awkward. The better thing to do is get vision. Because that's really all you can do. The enemy team knows that you're together. So it's best to just see where you can place wards without actually getting spotted out. And that's exactly what they do. X Nova dropping sentries all over the place, making sure, and this is just one of those really common, if you're Radiant side, you've lost their safe lane tower, you're gonna try and control your own jungle area because it helps you control the mid lane tower as well. So he's trying to find any of those observer wards before he actually drops his own off. Yeah, and it's actually FY that's in this top lane, so PSG LGD should have activated. OG's gonna look for this fight because they know that this line can come in. At best, it's a four on five. That's why Ana's looking for it. Why do you think they sent the uh, lion back? I'm not sure. I think they were actually trying to avoid the five on five. And you saw for a second they were there as four, and they're like, wait, the wrong hero is not here. Yeah. Anytime FY shows in a lane like that, OG's gonna smoke up and take a fight. Anytime maybe shows in a lane like that, OG will smoke up and take a fight. Yeah, because the disables are so effective against the OG heroes, right? Faces Void, you've got this Pango who can't really swashbuckle forward, has to just rely on Rolling Thunder. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of a mistake by FY, showing in that top lane. As soon as you showed in that top lane, it makes it really hard for the rest of PSG LGD to be down in that bottom area. Now, Blitz, a lot of people are going to say, well, what do you mean mistake? Because nothing bad happened. We actually didn't lose any heroes as a result. Why was that bad for PSG LGD? Because I think they wanted to take that fight. Yeah. I think they want to be in that bottom area uh, and continue to protect their ward. If you notice, as a result of that happening, they instantly lost this ward down here at bottom. Uh -huh. Being able to protect that ward and take a fight around that, because they placed two sentries too, you know that... Uh, OG, they don't have any vision I in that camp. Like, you'll win the vision advantage in that fight alone. Yeah. And being able to fight with vision is so important for your course. And now they're really fractured, right? As they retreated back, they naturally, like, some of them yeah, this is what their triangle, and this is what OG is trying to take advantage of. Yeah. They know, okay, they retreated. Highly unlikely, they all five-man back to the same side. It's a little bit awkward for them. Uh, because now, whenever you have to back out like that, like you said, I really like that point, it leaves an opening. Yeah. Naturally, somebody is going to go in a different direction. You have to be crazy disciplined as a team to like five man back in that situation. Like, sure, if you're if you're hitting high ground, everyone knows back together. Nobody TP away foolishly. Don't let them get an opening. But like in that situation, right, going from jungle to jungle, naturally people want to farm. Yeah. If you notice, the Ember Spirit is really close to a Sacred Relic, yep. and his Radiance. Uh, you have Ame that just finished up his. Aghanim Scepter, like these guys want items. It's human nature. You're really close to something, but like just a little bit more. Yep. And he will get that Aghanim Scepter because of the way he split up, but we'll see whether or not he gets caught. Yeah, I mean, that's the scariest part about OG is they sort of ignore that in a way. They're like, they screw human nature. Uh, yeah, because you have this Nature's Prophet that's almost close to an AC. Uh, and Toxin saying, almost like, has his Aghanim Scepter, like, and they're just like, whatever, just take the fight. Yeah. The numbers advantage is too good. They could have just, you know, like, okay, like, we've taken over our own jungle, let's keep farming and such, but 
Instead, OG is the kind of team that just says, hey, they've screwed up. Let's take advantage of that. How are you feeling, Blitz? Me, Enjoying good. TI? Oh, I love this series. God, it's so good, right? <laughs> if you can tell, like, uh, I did my homework. Yes. I watched the VODs. Yep. Oh, because uh, I wanted to know, like, what makes these teams tick? Yeah. Why is OG as good as they are? Because I feel like LGD, what they're doing is, like, they're playing into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, OG is the same squad. Yeah. That's no criticism of them. It's actually impressive, like, how well they've done yeah. off of, like, this one principle of Dota. And it's like, you know, invade the jungle, secure the safe lanes out, push them out, force people to play at your tempo. And PSG LGD is thinking, what are the counters to that? We don't want to play the same game. We don't want to get into these, like, 70 minute slugfest. Because I feel like OG, that's what they like. They like to clinch you, throw to the body repeatedly. And PSG LGD, conversely, they're like, what's the counter to that then? How do we deal with that? We pick up these early BKBs. We have a hero that can deal with the split push. Make it so that we can punish them uh, in the five on five fights. Since we are going to be here for just a bit longer, I want to tell you guys some about the atmosphere of this stadium. There's basically uh, there's two different big seating areas, one at the bottom, one at the top, and it is just packed all the way to the tip of the top of the stadium. Yeah, it's actually wild how many OG fans came out. Yeah, we had uh, a decent number of fans right behind me, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> Other than that. No, there's everywhere. There's uh, about half the crowd, I'd say. The half the crowd, half the crowd are cheering for OG. Yeah. They're, they're just not near the, the mics. Yeah, right? yeah, they, yeah, They're just not near the crowd mics. They're a little bit further. Yeah. <laughs> they, they got some upper seats. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, all the LGD fans are all at the bottom, and that's everything you're hearing. No, it's, it's, it's like, again, it was almost deathly quiet when OG came out. No booing or anything, but, I, I, you know, and I think the crowd is smart in that way. They want OG to know, like, hey, we supported you up until now, but in this series, we're definitely back at LGD. Yeah. Everyone's holding their LGD is invincible flags. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the brackets and see how OG and LGD managed to make it this far. It was crazy how many of the same teams were showing up in that upper bracket again, right? It feels like deja vu. Last time, of course, uh, EG, they went a little bit further, but <laughs> things happen. <laughs> true, true. They got their rematch against OG in the uh, upper bracket semifinals, just like last year. That was a real heartbreaker. Yeah. Although this time around, they, they kind of got crushed. The LGD versus VG game, I'm a little bit sad that one went 2-0 just because, you know, hearing them talk about playing against each other and what that was like. I mean, they said that LGD actually, uh, you know, was like, <laughs> they really respect each other, right? Like VG Gaming, they're a young squad, so they look up to everybody who's on the side of LGD. And now they're going to have to ride all their hopes for a China TI. Yeah, wasn't it fate that was like, I'd, I'd love, he's like, my dreams to go to the finals against LGD and then LGD wins. And then crown, crown yeah. LGD. Very cute. And LGD, I'm sure, is feeling a lot of that pressure of being the last remaining home team. There's a lot of little stuff in that interview. So I think it was also Fade who said, like, is he 20, 22 years old or something? He's like, I've been a fan of FY for 22 years. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. uh, and, and I think that's something about Dota in China, right? Is that there is just a bigger legacy to be had, right? Yeah. Oh, dating back to the Dota 1 days. Now that DDC, as you know, my personal favorite player mm -hmm. in the world, now that DDC's out, I think I might switch sides to the Chalice train. Mm. I think that might be... That might be your new your new favorite? Yeah, it might be that or... It might I, be that or, like, Seb. Because yeah. Seb was a talent. And then he... Dude, that, his that way was back. the crazy part. We worked ESL1 Frankfurt with Seb. Dude, he told me... We watched him win a TI, and now we're watching him in an upper back Austin, and fight. Deadass, he looked me in the eye. Yeah? And he said... I'm going to make it as a pro again. And I straight up, I laughed. And you I, laughed like, I straight up was like, oh, good luck, dude. Uh, I was like, I'll see you next TI, you know, as a panel. So, and then uh, <laughs> what a fool he made me. And I'm so happy for him. Could have happened to a better guy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was uh, it was always a pleasure to be able to work with Seb. Just, you know, a, a very happy guy all around. And, and I think it's also really inspiring. I think it was inspiring to a lot of people. Yeah, Cinder's in back there, like, writing as many notes as he can about what happened. <laughs> 
It's like, what did he do with these events? <laughs> How did he get the motivation? Well, Sindrid, first thing, you have to become a coach. Yes. That was the first step, right? The it's remix. just coming back and, and being a coach. And that's oh, we're going to get back, Let's into, get the game. back into it. OG versus LGDA. Game one. We are 24 minutes in. OG have a 1,000 net worth lead. They have a global combo between Furion plus a Boots, a Travel, Tops, and Zeus. We are closing in on some very key items. Bottom lane. They look like they want to make a play for uh, Leading out Zeb, though, with his early BKB. Again, he got the Orchid super fast, so with BKB had it about 23 minutes. Match that it. tempo. Last time he uh, Ame challenged him in that 1v1, and he gave away 1,000 gold. Zeb was just a little bit shy of the BKB, but this time he's got it. It probably tips you off to the fact that you're the highest net worth here in the game. <laughs> when you see that 1,000. Yeah. It's one of those things. You don't really know that information until perhaps it's a bit too late. Batting Roots on the ground. PSG LGD scrambling to grab everything on the bottom lane. OG did not get the chance to be able to punish uh, maybe in his positioning. So he does pick up the Agnum Scepter. And he been popping the shrine, even though he was about three quarters full. Just going to top things off. Get some fresh fuel for the fight to come. I love when people hold on to Batting Roots, by the way. Let it percolate. Why, why though? It, it doesn't do anything. Once you put it into your bottle, it's based off the time you picked it up. I know, but it's cool. It's cool? It's like you've got you've got a gold explosion. Guys, I don't have buyback. Someone use your bottle bounty rune. What? As soon as he hits uh, like 1,200 gold, he's going to pop it. Okay, okay. It's going to be that, that surprise. Haha. Uh -huh. All right, they're going to go for... I'd like to see him remnant back TP. Help his team. Yeah. Deal with that top play? lane push, yeah. it is a big push. This dude. is your this is your job right now yeah. as Ame. Letting anybody else do this job, no. It's purely for him. Stay down here as four on the side of PSG LGD. Stick this around, let him why, get his uh, radiance. Anna's kind of sticking around, right? He may try and go for the Chronosphere onto Ame. Yeah, they're gonna TP in with the nature crop. He goes the top. of the Chronosphere. The TP coming in for the Furia just outside of me. Doom He wants to it, but all the BKB activated, he jumps away. This is why Ame oh, no. picked up the fast BKB and sadly Seb was just on the outside of the that is why some auto attack. It's not for the team fight, it's for when you go for these split pushes that you need to be afraid. And Seb, if he TPs on the other side, yep. they probably, no, they definitely get that kill. Yeah. And he was stuck in a situation where he was already TPing basically at the same time the Protosphere was down. So he was like, I can't, I shouldn't really cancel this and replace it. I oh, that was such a hope. sick trap. By getting punished for that now, losing the bottom tier 2 tower, you can put even pressure. And this is the worst thing as a Nature's Prophet, once you lose your tier 2 towers, yeah. uh, the potential for trading racks is always available to them. And because you have this Ember Spirit, it's even harder to just go for a one-for-one -one racks trade. Right. So if PSGD, LGD feel stronger, they'll just go for it. And they should be picking up the pace right about now, right? They just got their Radiance. They know there's no Chrono. Yeah, here. you go for it right now. There's no better time to go for it, and that's why they're just trying to... Uh, not, they're not going for the kill at all, but they're just trying to push Chalice back, make him so he's low enough, he doesn't feel comfortable leading an engagement. They push out mid, which is going to make this smoke a little bit more obvious. They use the Orchid onto Ame. He's obviously fine. We'll hold on to his BKB charge as well. PSG LGD, they're going to be spotted at Thunder God's Wrath, just as we were talking about that mid lane push. Pushing Chalice back, pushing the wave in, makes that obvious. They read exactly where PSG LGD is, but... LGD still going to go for it as Chalice is going to wrap around with FY behind the tier 1 tower. They're going to jump for it. Catching No Tail. The Rolling Thunder is out from Jarex already. He's going to hit FY as well as the Thunder God's Wrath and stuff. But they're going to be able to bring down one support at least. Chalice left in an awkward position here, but maybe focusing on that objective. And OG, a little bit skittish about taking the fight. They've got 15 seconds left of the Chronosphere. And that's why Ami immediately going to jump into this high ground. Hoping to be able to help Action Nova out. He's going to use the ult, but there goes the Ravage. But it doesn't actually catch Elena. They only manage to finish up Jarex. They're going to jump over the shrine where Tops and is sitting all by himself. No, oh, the buyback coming in. Jared is going to try and help out more tops in here. Youth after unto himself. The Jar Cups is trying to stay away from Anna and all that physical damage. The Chrono's back. Oh, just came out. The Rocket Rock is enough to finish off Anna. And Anna will finish off the Gyro in turn. Ame, he does have a lot of damage though with that Radiance. Can they chase down Anna? Seb is still so strong. Chains. He's dead. Going to go for the two supports here. He's got Seb as well as Jared. He will not try and chase down the carry of Anna, but he will get two kills for the team. And that was the buyback from Jarex. Fantastic fight from PSG LGD. That all comes down to X Nova's positioning. They all leaned on him while they were killing the cores of the backline of OG. And once you get on top of the Zeus, the team fight feels completely over. 
14 to 16, 20, 29 minutes in, and PSG LGD for the first time in about 15 minutes had the net worth lead. No matter how small it is, they do have the lead, they do have the experience. With the Chronosphere being used in that last fight as well, that's got to give PSG LGD a lot of confidence to keep this going. They need Ravage, though, in 70 seconds. And they should feel really strong right now. Yeah. It's so hard for OG to take a fight. Like I said, straight up five on fives, OG will lose. Even with Chronos, I, OG hit a two-man Chrono yep. onto both cores, and it doesn't matter. So, X Nova, there's a lot of ways that Oracle's try and solve the problem, which is you've got a target on you. Everyone's going to try and chase you down. And a lot of them go for Glimmer Capes, Blink Daggers, maybe an Aether Lens to help the cast range. But here, because of the global presence of Furion plus Zeus, we've got X Nova trying to rush an A on this, which is a really smart decision, I think. It also makes it so that if you do get chronoed with one of your two cores, you'll never be focused down. Yeah. It just wastes more and more time for mana. And I think for PSG LGD, the longer the fight lasts, because you have a core that can consistently catch up to the enemy team and comes with his own stun, you're going to be stronger. Which yep. is wild to think about, uh, considering Zeus is one of the best. Yeah, that is one thing. The only thing that really can stop that longer team fight going in the favor of LGD has got to be Thompson. And that's why they've been trying to focus him down so much. He, he needs a blink dagger. 20. That's what he's going for, is that blink dagger. Again, the Orchid, but again, Ahmed doesn't care. In fact, he almost has an Aggative Scepter already. He needs to outplay them right now, Thompson. Yeah. Get the Blink Dagger. Figure out your positioning in team fights to be able to get in and out. It's going to be so hard against the Aghanim Scepter, Ember Spirit. I, I've heard a lot of Ember Spirit players, uh, CCNC in particular, I think. Uh, Gunner as well agreed with this. The Aghanim is a bit of a trap. But in this game, right, it is meant for it. Trying to get on top of the Zeus is like Ame's biggest objective in every single fight, and then Aghanim Scepter will do a lot for them. Didn't they say it was a trap when you get it before you hit level 25? Yeah, I think that was also another part of it, in which uh, Ame is closing in on 25. Yeah, once you get your 25 plus the Aghanim Scepter, I think it's real good. Yeah. He's already got so many damage items as well. Hasn't opted for anything that's going to proc off a slight of fish just yet. But. I would have really liked for, in this game in particular, for him to have gone for the boots of travel. Yeah. It makes this playstyle that he's opting for a little bit stronger. Yeah. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't go for the Maelstrom as well, considering how, you know, the Furion with so many trance. Radiance works. Radiance works just as well, I guess, and maybe stronger in these team fights for him. Radiant. The Blink Dagger's almost here for tops. And what else do we have? Jerex. He's trying to get a Glimmer Cape, uh, I think specifically to help out Thompson because they know how important his positioning is in these fights. Seth has his AC. And Anna, the BKB as well as a Manta. Nine second BKB left for him. Industry. I sort of feel like OG, they sort of have to go for a smoke, pick off a core, and immediately try to Roshan. And use that Roshan to get even more map control. Grab this tier two tower at bottom, uh, then diverge onto this mid lane. Because you are going like, to feel like really good once you have that Satanic on yes. Tyra, right? So I think they really need to make that play on the side of OG. Go for some sort of five man. Try to get the cores. Uh, if you can find the Ember Spirit doing this play style, that would be ideal. The problem is normally you get one you get one moment where you can trick somebody and they forget about how they can die. Yeah. And that was a top lane. But maybe they can do it again. Ame, if he's going to stick around for the next creep wave, he could just die here. 2500 HP. Can he actually live through with all this? They're going to be able to help out with the Nimbus as well as York. And oh, with the Manta, man, Anna just cleaned him up so quick. Go Roche. Go Roche. Go Roche. Is this the opportunity for OG that they needed to claim the Aegis? You at least have an opportunity to, if he did have buyback, you could maybe force a buyback. But as soon as they know that they're Roaching and they can't buyback, they know the Ember's out of the fight. Yeah. They didn't go for a smoke, but it's the same idea. Get a core pick off, go into Roshan. You have to use this Aegis. And how much of this is a feint from Chalice? Is he just threatening? Hey, Ember Spear could buy back. You gotta get out of this pit. Or does he actually think they can win a five versus four? I don't think they can win a five versus four, but they're trying to stall it up as long as they can. But once they see FY at top lane, they're gonna just walk back into the Roshan pit. Yeah. They know this isn't a real fight. This yeah. is sort of just buying a little bit of time. OG are doing a really good job of making the most of this, right? With the push on the top lane, getting tier three, the tier one at bottom actually does fall. Chalice. Yeah, what they're again, trying to do is by time with Ember Spirit. There's about still a 25 second window. Seb is now here with his AC. 
All right, if OG was going to commit, they have to do it now. At 20 seconds. Nice defense by PSG LGD. Yeah, this is that was so smart of Chalice. Chalice just walks in. He knows there's no Chrono. He can't die. He's got a pipe and a Solar Crest and Vlad's. But I do think the idea behind what OG was going for is the right play. Yeah. And hey, that play happens again. Then next thing you know, you've taken the tier two at bottom. Now. Oh, they're going for now. Ooh. PSG LGD, they said, you didn't want to fight us? Four versus five? Well, guess what? Now the Ember Spirit's alive. And we don't think you're going to fight us for this. They got to wait out Kono, too. Ten seconds left, so it is going to be up. PSG LGD, because they've got this uh, this Satanic, I think they feel a little bit too overconfident. They've got to be careful. If this Faceless Void engages, I was looking for the angle right now. He sees two cores for the time being. But both teams just playing around this area. Both low to just give it up. Roshan is getting so low, bit by bit, that eventually someone's going to fully commit to it. They are going to be able to get the pink off. That's going to start with FY. Now the Orchid onto the Tidehunter to prevent any sort of ravage. As uh, OG did get a little bit too close to that watermelon. And look at this Ana. He's making his way up. Making sure to use that mobility to their advantage. You can see Seb pushing in bottom lane. This is an opportunity for him to take the tier two. With uh, no boots of travel, Ame has a tough time being able to deal with this. He's going to run to bottom lane, but the damage, a significant amount will have already been done with double seat wagon push. Seb likely to take this tower. At least the sea dragons. They'll get him denied. The Solar Crest. They finish off the Nimbus. That's another 100 gold. Maybe he's committed for this. FY's coming back right now. Stop. Oh, that 40 movement speed coming in just at the right time. Ame sees the opportunity to be able to jump in the back he's line. Got top time. FY's been stunned up by the Anna. Now, maybe is going to be able to get around, but Thompson being hunted down the route. He's going down the blink. They got to get right. He gets out with the shrine activated. FY might just be able to live. Jerry's getting a little stuck on the clip, but it looks like FY does manage to live. Ame jumping back into this one. Will manage to find no tail here. That's one support down. Five for five. Now, LGD trying to go back into their own home ground to be able to finish up. And he got the right there. He's dead. He's dead. And now OG. He does have buyback. Are they buy back? He's got to commit to it right now if he is going to do it. He does have a TP scroll up. He's going to commit now with a stomp. Landing on a three. Can maybe finish this one up. So low. He's going to be able to jump in. Throw his spear out. The eight has been picked up. And Anna. They've got to retreat. This is no longer a fight. He can take. But Jarek's already picked off. The stomp. Sable. And it's been hit. And it's been caught. The time watch from the side. Seven's here with his route. Anything to be able to protect from their Anna. But it's still been slowed down. Another stomp. This time for the AT. And that will be enough for Anna to be able to get out. It looks like Seb. His life has been forfeited here. He's going to be chased down by Ame. Off the BKB. Tries to go for this route. TP away. And he's fine, actually. Impressive play by OG to be able to bail out Anna and still get out. But still, a big win for PSG LGD as they manage to just finish up Roshan just in time. I mean, the balls that may be there to say, I'm going to pop BKB and I'm finishing up this Roshan even as Anna's buying back and trying to TP in. Oh, that was so rough. I actually thought Whoa. that that fight was going to go okay for OG. After they went on Thompson and Thompson outplays them, Yules into the blink, he dodges the Ravage, he goes right, the Ember Spirit think he walked up. It looked really good. And then Anna was never able to get his Chronosphere off yeah. in that engagement. He just didn't really see a good opportunity. He wasn't able to keep up with the Zeus, so they weren't able to layer their damage together. As we're going to see again, he drops the Chronosphere, he thinks about running in, but he knows that's a trap. Yeah. FY, he's ready with the stun. I mean, maybe if he had been able to time walk actually into the pit, he was just there a second faster. Time walks into the pit, gets off the Chronosphere. Sadly, level 20 talent just wasn't quite enough. I thought Seb was dead here for sure. Nice BKB usage. Gets the sprout just around his body. And it's always tough. You've seen it time and time before. These late game Furions, everyone. Nobody wants to be able to hold on to a quelling blade this late. FY and uh, Chalice are the only ones who have it here. Oh, no, never mind. Next Nova has it as well. Butterfly up next for our Gyrocopter. And this 
is going to be some serious momentum for PSGLG. It's funny, though, that uh, win probability still heavily favoring OG. And I think even after that fight, it may still be in their favors. Yeah, 66%. Again, the late game of the Basis Void and trying to go high ground against that, as well as the ET, the Zeus, the mobility of the Furion. The list actually goes on and on how good high ground defense is for OG. I still think this game is slightly PSGLGD favored. Yeah. I'm not really willing to... I, I think this game is pretty coin flippy. The OG's lineup, the way that it functions is if they do win one team fight, they're going to push in the lanes real quick. Uh, they've got the build strength, they've got an AC, their heroes hit towers very well. Uh, but I feel like right now, PSG LGD, they should win most of the team fights. It's a lot easier for their Ember Spirit to get his damage off as opposed to Thompson, who's got to play constantly on retreat. Like, yeah. He has to rely on Ana to get that Chronosphere off, and when he doesn't, you see how weak their lineup looks. So we have with uh, the Scythe of Ice being finished up by Seth, Ame is already trying to address that with an Aeon Disc of for his own. So they do have a Hex on, now yeah. on Seth. That's a big item pickup for him. So that's why he's trying to go for that Aeon Disc, because the BKB may not be enough anymore. He still needs to be able to address that split push from OG, even if they have the team fight locked in, especially with the Aegis on maybe right now. The, uh, they have to make sure they are not outmaneuvered by OG, as they've done that so many times in the past, and so many times at this international as well. It's part of what their uh, aggression, why it looks so good, right? It's being able to, first of all, put the enemy team in the wrong, wrong place, wrong part of the map. And then force that fight, a Shadow Blade. Or a Sev, just to help him get that Scythe of Ice off. It's good damage, too, and it helps him so that he can deal with these stragglers. He doesn't have to pop his BKB just to get kills. There is a gem pickup almost immediately by X Nova. I think they're feeling the the lack of wards right now. Like they, I think they've accepted that they're never going to get wards out for very long. But they also have to take away OG's vision if they can. It's, That's where OG's lineup is still pretty potent. It's so hard against a Furion, right? Like sometimes you just give the wards to the Furion, even if he's poor, and he goes out, plants some Jericks with his swash buckle allowing him to get to places that most supports can as well. Yeah, we saw in the pregame stats, by the way, uh, both teams used to such aggression, but this time, and they played against each other so often that they've slowed down the pace. They know that all it really comes down to is the team fights. Thunder God. Thunder God's Wrath going off, just making sure that LGD can't really challenge for this bounty room. And that'll allow OG to be able to get three out of the four, even against an Aegis. It goes to show, like, uh, PSG LGD, they're still going to be a little bit timid about taking fights against OG. Especially as they're split around the map. A Rolling Thunder going off. Does manage to knock up X Nova with that line being finished off as well. Two different kills like this would be massive. They do have Ame coming in, but immediately the BKB from Seb, they know. Two pick offs on the supports. As long as nobody dies here, they're going to do a long jump in from the Agonim Scepter Spirit to be able to chase down No Tail, but No Tail managed to get off the stomp onto Ame. Ame finished him off with a double damage, especially with Chalice and, and maybe joining him in the mid lane. And so the split push continues. Too. Tops in that top lane, Seb towards bottom. If you can't fight him, extend the game until you find opportunities where you can. Especially with these level 25 talents coming in. Anna has his with the Chronosphere AoE. We've got. I know there's no BKB, but no vision either. Yeah. Those effective late game Shadow Blades. It's always tough for cores to carry vision. Yeah, that's why Nature's Prophet, it doesn't feel awful, even though you can't team fight too well. Uh, Sprout is going to get much better as the game goes on. Your Shadow Blade will get a lot better because cores can't really carry around the gems or anything like that. Yeah. Look at that, though. The. Uh... Most Zeus's I see go for that 155 hard lightning damage. It's so much, considering how often you spam it. Oh, is this TB and Seb? That's some church bells hanging between his legs right there. Just TB's in, instantly BKB's finished off the tier three. Now shrines have been unlocked, and eventually he'll take it with the uh, the Treants. Look at Maybe's build, by the way. He's decided to go for the Basher because he's so tired of this. He knows they need some way to punish that. 
with the Mjolnir attack speed as well. He's just going to be focusing on all of the bottom lane. Various procs. They are going to be able to get the Aegis to, to pop here and takes away the regen while Ame being gone and they do have the Chrono Sphere. It's Seth going to be able to get him enough damage, damage for this. Just, oh, it just overwhelms Ame very quickly. He still, and I'm not sure if he ever will, be tanky enough to live through that Chrono Sphere unless he's got the Aeon disc. And he didn't have a Remnant far back enough. I think he was relying on the speed to try to outplay. Got a little bit lazy there. And OG punishes their lineup. It's designed to constantly pressure the lanes, find openings like that. Yolner, almost complete for Somnus. We've got the 20 strength for the Pangolier. Pop and Link gets managed to get the Hanks follow up, and they're just gonna try and jump out as quickly as possible. They do have them dead. That was my back from Ame, and that's two minutes. He is dead for two minutes now off of the buyback around Roshan, and LGD know about that. Yeah, there is no one near him. And it just decided to step forward. And now Seven's going to do everything he can to try and force the attention to the side lanes rather than that mid lane where PSG LGD is barreling down. But that's where Ame comes into play. He may not have that A on disc, but he's going to play like he does have it. Jerex. Get him rolling in with this Glimmer Cape, the Invis Ball. Not really doing a whole lot, especially since they have the vision down. They're going to do a decent amount of Somnus. They've got Thompson. They've Thompson with the Blink Initiation from that boy. Here's Splinter. Going to come a little bit too late. No damage being dealt. And Somnus can now turn all the attention into the Tier 3. 80 seconds left for uh, Anna's Revival here. And PSG LG, they're going to have to poke him down to make sure they don't get caught by the Rock. He's going to be hit on three. They're going to chase down Jack to the back line. It's a more finish off seven. The back that is going to be good enough. His death in mid lane as his team scrambles time and time again to be able to push down PSG LGD. They Very save the rocks here, looks like. Left. The Nothing initiation. Side of OG, they're going to be able to find the initiation. Once again, on the top of Thompson, they have no save mechanism. Now he's dead for two minutes. And PSG LGD, what's the point of being here? Just hit the tier four to go throw. 40 seconds still for the spaceless void. Anna says to his team, my bad. bad. And it was indeed his bad. It's that one little mistake from him. They just cost him the game. Death trying to draw some attention away from the tier fours, away from the throne, but Jerry can do little to stop his death. No tails now here, 15 seconds. But the throne being just poked away by Somnus. He's doing so much damage, 2,000 HP. 10 seconds left to the boy, 1,500. That's it, game one is all PSG LGD. Such a tense game, and that one lacks in judgment. Yep. This is what is going to determine the victory between these two teams who were so evenly matched for 40 minutes. One slip up in Roche, one slip up in the mid lane, and PSG LGD will take game one. You can totally tell that they've done their homework. This has been a great start to this series. I hope you go for the full series just like we've had in every single TI pass between LGD and OG. Okay, and one of the things we hear from Will is the idea of LGD doing their homework. And I think that we definitely saw the stack of papers come out when OG...